welcome to digital softics uh, continuing software uh, engineering tutorials uh, today topic is software requirement specification name is SRS so software requirement specification is an important topic in software engineering uh, because it specify the software and specify their functionality so let's move on and go through today's agenda uh, what is software requirement specification or in short we call them SRS uh, characteristics of good SRS key components of SRS and purpose of SRS and the last one the example or an overview on SRS documentation so let's move on uh, what is software requirement specification uh, a software requirement specification name is SRS is a description written by software developer or project team. Uh, SRS is written for a system to be developed. Its layout functional and non-functional requirements and may include the set of use cases that describe the user interaction that the software must provide. What is SRS? <coughs> So SRS is generally a specification towards the software. The functional and non-functional requirements uh, about the use cases include everything related to the software is defined in SRS. It's in a documentation. So SRS is a specification or description written by software developer related to the software or the system to be developed. So SRS include the set of are the list of non-functional and functional requirements set of use cases uh, the scope of the system and everything related to the system that is important that is related that the system will provide we specify in SRS for example we have a software for calculator so in for software requirement specification the SRS of calculator is that it will provide the functional requirements such as addition subtraction multiplication everything the functionality they will provide or and some non-functional requirements such as security a user login and everything related a lock so that is the non-functional requirement how it will provide also the functionality it will provide by the system so in SRS we specify everything related to the software including functional requirements non-functional requirements our descriptions interactions of the software are uh, when the user interact and the set of use cases that how the user will interact with the system so what characteristics of a good SRS what is the key component which provide which uh, are the attributes of a good SRS that following are the characteristics of a good SRS number one is correctness so correctness is important thing because it will be correct that the software will provide this functionality it should be in the correct order it should be um, uh, not useless or lie because when someone or developer spe not specify the system functionality so it may be uh, the use will affect of the software so million and billions of rupees are being invested are being used by the uh, users and the client so the SRS should be correct and the developer should provide the correct document for the SRS that the system will provide this functionality uh, let's discuss one by one uh, number one is correctness uh, user review is used to ensure the correctness of requirement stated in the SRS SRS is said to be correct correct if it covers all the requirement that are actually expected from the system so when the client and user specify their needs and deliver to the developer so the developer will specify that the all the requirements of the users are covered and it will be provided in a document form name as SRS so it should be correct and it should be uh, not 100% correct but it should be 90, uh, 90 to 95% correct and everything is uh, you expected from a system is written here and it will provide by the system so it is the responsibility of developer to provide this document in the correct order uh, second one is completeness so completeness of SRS indicate every sense of com 
completion including the number of all the pages resolving in the determined first much extent as possible as well covering all the function and function requirements properly. Complete is there that if a user expected 10, requ 10 functionality so it will be uh, written in the document and the system will provide that 10 functionality. So it should be complete and everything expected by the user from the system will be provided in the SRS. Consistency. Requirements in SRS are said to be consistent if there is no conflict between set of requirements. Example of conflict include difference uh, in terminology used in separate places, logical conflicts like time piece of uh, report of generation. So when there is no conflict in the set of requirements and there is no term used which uh, create a conflict, so it should the responsibility of developer that the document should be consistent. It will provide one meaning by one word so when the requirements are conflicted the functionality will affect and the the user will not be able to uh, fully satisfied from the developer so the consistency is also an important attribute uh, unambiguous uh, in srs is said to be unambiguous if all the requirements stated have one uh, only one interruption some ways to prevent unambiguous include the set of use of modeling techniques like ER diagrams, purple reviews, and body checks. Unambiguous that the system functionality and the requirements are fully re represented, like in S ERE diagrams, entity relationship diagrams, proper reviews. In proper view, the system should be clear, and there is no amb ambiguity related to the functionality of the system. So the developer will try out to write in SRS that they are unambiguous. So there is no interruption among the requirements. So the unambiguity is important thing because when there is an ambiguity in the document, so there is ambiguity in the functionality of the system. So unambiguous system will not be accepted by the user. So it will try out to care. It will care, uh, take care by the developer to try out unambiguous. Uh, to remove any ambiguity from the document. Uh, characteristics of a good SRS. Uh, another one is verifiability. So verifiability has just been a way in which we verify the user needs. That the user expected these functionality and we have verified that it is it will provide by the system. An SRS is verifiable if there exists a specific technique to measure the extent to which a requirement is met by the system. For example, a requirement stated that the system must be user-friendly is not verifiable and a list of such requirements should be avoided. So it is really very important that this that we will verify the functionality of the system. We verify that what we have done in the system and that we clear out all the things to the user. Understandable by the customer. So an end user may be expert in his our specific domain but might it not be an expert so we should take care of these things that the user may not be aware about the systems so in srs we specify everything related to the system and we cannot use terminologies and aspects of computer science and software engineering so most of the user are not aware about the domain so the use of formal notation and symbols should be avoided as much extent as possible. So we should take care of uh, using uh, terminologies and symbols which are not understood by the develop uh, the uh, clients or the user or the stakeholder. We should uh, take care of these things. Uh, the key component in SRS. Key component in SRS. So what are the key components in SRS? SRS include a lot of components, but we have point out the important things. Uh, business drivers. This section describes the reason the customer is looking to build the system, including problems with the currently system and opportunities the new system will provide. So for example, we, have, we, pro, uh, we are developing a system for a business. So, we try out that the uh, already the business or the organization use the system so the customer is being in the way that it will need the new system which provide the solution of the current problem so the goal of the new system is that 
to resolve the current problem or the problem included in the system. So business drivers are really very important. This section describes the reason the customer is looking to be built. The system including problems with the currently system and opportunity the new system will provide or the functionality or the facility new system will provide. So it's based on that we resolve the current problem and we resolve the problems in the new system which will to be built and which will provide and resolve the solution to the available problem facing by the organization. So these are very important business driver system qualities. So quality is really very important. And so for development, we should take care of these things. The software quality is the non-functional requirements, but it's also affect the functional requirements. So this section is used to describe the non-functional requirement that define the quality attributes of the system. Sorry for the interruption. The quality attribute of the system, such as reliability, serviceability, security, and scalability. So we should take care of these things. These are non-functional requirements, but it are related to the system quality and it uh, directly affect our non-functional requirements. So in SRS, we specify these sections, the business drivers, which provide the solution to the new, uh, the solution to the problems facing by the organization, the system qualities, which include non-functional requirements, such as security, scalability, availability, constraint and assumptions. The third one, this section include by any constraint that the customer has imposed on the system design. It's also include the requirements, the engineering team's assumption about what is expended to happen during the project. So constraint rules, rules regulation, the local laws, the government law, the international laws we specify in this section. So SRS may, must include these things, which are laws and constraint or rules regulation on the system, which are imposed by the customer on the system, which are imposed by the government, which are imposed by the international organization, which cannot be going towards against the large re rules and regulation. So constraint and assumption in will be specif specify in this section. And this is the third one key component of an SRS. Uh, constraint and assumption we have uh, explain so this section include main constraint that the customer impose on the system design it also include the requirement engineering team assumption about what is expected to happen during the project so it's also have an instruction for the developer that it will be um, these instruction are followed by the uh, developers during uh, completing or uh, during development of a project acceptance criteria this section include details of the condition that must meet by the customer to accept the final system acceptance mean that that what the customer is expected from the system so it will provide the functional requirements it will provide their needs we should verify these things with the help of srs and the final section is the bond is be signed by this the clients and the stakeholder because it will accept the system. So if the if the uh, fun, if the requirements are being completed are being covered by the new system, so it should be acceptable. And we specify this ex acceptancy in uh, SRS or software requirement specification. Purpose why we use SRS or the purpose of SRS. And SRS form the basis of an organization entire projects. It set out the framework that all the development teams will follow. So the, the very important concept here arises that SRS include this rela instruction related to the systems or the functional and non-functional requirement, but it also have the framework that all the development teams will follow. So it is a roadmap for the developer and it is a system view for the clients. So SRS is important for developer or for project team and for the clients and the stakeholders. So the, the developer team will follow this SRS documentation and develop the system. And when the system is completed, so it will hand over the SRS to the 
to the users and user will see what the system will provide what is the scope what is the purpose what is the what are the goal are specified by the system by the developer because the goal has been uh, the goals of the system is been specified by the developer during software requirement elicitation so it's other thing so it provide critical information to our team including developments operation quality assurance QA and maintenance ensuring the team are in agreement in addition writing SRS can help developers reduce time and effort necessary to meet their goals as well as save money on the cost of the development so it is the table of contents of SRS what SRS include uh, the first section is introduction we have specified the purpose our documentation conventions such as standard rules we follow and 10 audience and reading suggestions project scope what is the scope of the project and a reference so it will be provided in introduction so these are the five sections in SRS documentation so the second one is overall description product perspectives product features user classes and characteristics operating environments design and implementing constraint and assumption and dependency these will be uh, placed in the overall description the third one is system features so system feature include uh, this section functional requirements and the fourth one is external interface requirements uh, which include user interface hardware interfaces software interfaces communication and uh, interfaces the, the 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 fifth one is non-functional requirements so any it, it include performance requirement safety requirements security requirement software quality attribute so uh, this is the table of contents that this is the table of contents of software requirement specification document what it include it include introduction it include overall description it includes system features it include external interface requirements and it include non-functional requirements so everything is specified related to the system so it is a roadmap for the developer and after this uh, system development the client and the user will see that what the system will provide which see this table of contents that this is the table of content everything we have specify in this documentation so it uh, will provide this functionality it will provide this function it will provide um, the security attributes it include these things so it is very important because uh, the developer and the clients and the user and the stakeholder are on the one page when K we then uh, he can see all these things and it is a big picture of the system so SRS documentation is important for uh, both uh, developers and uh, for the users so thanks for watching uh, subscribe for more videos and updates thank you